just two big humps with a serrated crest on each and very large mitered scales. They may be afraid that if we find these things, everything in Israel is going to change. In fact, everything in the world is going to change. I suddenly got this horrible feeling something was watching me. So I turned around like this and I looked up here and there's this huge black cat looking down me. What is the mystery behind Israel's sacred red heifer? And is Australia home to alien big cats? Animal X examines strange, mysterious creatures. First, to the rugged west coast of Canada to investigate a creature known as the Cadbrosaurus. Canada's west coast is renowned for its beauty, but it's also gained a notoriety to rival Loch Ness as home to a reptile the size of a bus that reportedly frequents the shallow coastal waters in the summer months. We got the binoculars and took a look at this first big one and could see a, a head at the front which looked like a giant sort of snake head and it was pulsing up and down in the water. Well, out of the water came what appeared to be two large tractor tires. Um, there was a vertical crest, quite vivid, and it had some very large scales, about at least about as big as my hand. We feel the evidence is sufficient that it uh, merits scientific recognition. Animal X went to the waters around Vancouver Island in search of the Cadborosaurus, a sea monster named after its favorite haunt, Cadbora Bay. Rock carvings by Native Americans are the earliest indications that a mysterious serpentine creature inhabited the local waters centuries ago, long before the arrival of Europeans. The long body and horse-like head bear no resemblance to any of the well-known marine animals seen in the area today. It does, however, bear a remarkable resemblance to the kind of creature spotted here on more than 200 occasions in the last century, a mysterious sea animal with needle-like teeth, a long scaly body, and muscles that ripple when it swims. Ivor Cook was watching Navy frigates exercising in the Strait of Juan de Fuca when a strange series of humps attracted his attention. Whilst I was observing the mounds, this head and a neck rose out of the water about, I would guess, about 18 inches. Uh, the head itself resembled that of a horse's or stunted horse's head. Ivor Cook watched the creature for about a minute as it surfaced and disappeared, then resurfaced before it eventually vanished into the depths. For others, the sighting has been briefer but incredibly dramatic. One local resident was boating with a friend when a strange creature appeared less than 20 feet away. Out of the water came two, what looked like two rotating tractor tires, and about that size. Couldn't see underneath them, just two big humps with a serrated crest on each and very large mitered scales, dark green in colour and the most startling thing was this ripple of muscle that seemed to be go going along the, the surface of the creature. Five years ago, pilot Don Behrens was on a training flight over Brentwood Bay when he directed his co-pilot to land near an object in the water. When the pair got closer, they realised they weren't heading for a stationary target. It was moving at high speed. There were two humps. Uh sticking out of the water. Approximately, I would say, maybe uh, eight inches to, uh, to a foot around. It was moving through the water very, very quickly, probably 20 miles an hour to start with, and then accelerated to approximately 40 miles an hour. Don remembers the creature being the same color as a porpoise, but this was no ordinary marine animal. When we saw it, we were very surprised at what we had seen. It, it looked like the legendary sea monsters that we've, uh, we've seen before on, uh, on movies and that sort of thing. But, we, uh, we looked at each other and we said, uh, we're not going to tell anyone because they'll think we're a bit nuts. Dr. Edward Busfield has left the comparatively predictable world of biology to find the truth about the Cadborosaurus, or caddy as it's known. A mountain of reported sightings provides compelling evidence that something lurks in the coastal waters. Dr. Busfield's trump card is a photograph taken in 1937. 
the strange looking creature was found in the stomach of a sperm whale. The animal was taken from the fore stomach, so it had not been digested. Uh, the specimen was in very good condition, as uh, attested by our living eyewitness, who was right there beside it at the time the photographs were taken. Dr. Boosfield has identified the creature's head, neck and tail, and is convinced it's a young Cadborosaurus. From the countless sightings, he believes the creatures grow to a length of 30 or 40 feet, spending most of their time in the Pacific Northwest and migrating to the shallower coastal waters in summer to bear their young. A Canadian writer and whaler claims to have caught an infant caddy 20 years ago, but William Hagelin concluded that if it died in his hands, it would only be a forgotten curiosity and release the strange creature back into the sea. All that remains of his catch is a drawing. The mystery of the sea monster persists, but Dr. Boosfield has his theories. Caddy is very probably what we call a relict organism. It's the last surviving member of a, an ordinal group of animals that were much more diverse, say, 60, 80 million years ago in the long gone Mesozoic era but we still have one alive. Dr. Boosfield's search for evidence goes on as the sightings continue. Laurie's Mock was dropping anchor on the bay last year when her son noticed two rows of humps in the water. She grabbed the binoculars and took a look for herself. The humps were smooth and uh, were staying uniform in shape. And then I saw the head, which was like a giant snake head, and it was smooth and quite close to the surface and it was pumping up and down in a rhythmic motion like somebody doing the breaststroke. And this went on for quite a while and eventually it put its head under the water and it didn't come out again. Ron Minchin was walking his dog along the beach when he noticed an unusual creature fitting the same description. I was looking out in the water there about a hundred yards offshore I saw these two humps slowly going through the water and they were very shiny and black, and uh, nothing like I'd ever seen before. That same day, a group of students also reported seeing the same strange-shaped creature. Could it be that all this anecdotal evidence points to the fact that the waters around Cadborough Bay are hiding something that can't easily be explained? Like the Cadborosaurus, Israel's red heifer defies an easy explanation. Deeply rooted in religious mythology, its presence is said to signal enormous change. So could this creature affect the lives of each and every one of us? It's an eternal mystery, and the answer to a prophecy. The appearance of an animal said to be capable of changing the world. The legend of the red heifer is as old as the Bible itself. A commandment told Moses to sacrifice a sacred red cow as part of a ceremony of ritual cleansing. Animal X traveled to Israel and the holy city of Jerusalem to investigate what many believe is a modern day miracle. Orthodox Jews spend many hours here at the Wailing Wall praying for the arrival of their Messiah. They believe that before he comes, certain biblical prophecies must be fulfilled. One of them is the birth of a pure red heifer. Now many believe that prophecy has come true. Her ashes are used in order to purify a person who wishes to enter the area of the Holy Temple. Rabbi Shmaria Shaw normally runs an agricultural school, but now he's in charge of a gift from God. He says at first the heifer looked like any normal young cow, but incredibly, it became clear she fulfilled all the biblical requirements of a sacred animal. She has to be free from blemishes. For that reason, we've put her here in solitary confinement. The other cows will not bother her and uh, we have not shaved off her horns, she has not been branded, her ears have not been pierced. According to biblical scholars, 
The significance of the red heifer appears in the Old Testament book of Numbers, chapter 19. To purify the people of Israel, it says, a young red cow must be killed and its carcass burnt. The ashes dissolved in a cistern of water become the waters of purification. Small amounts cleanse people of religious impurity, especially following contact with the dead. In ancient times, the water allowed worshippers to enter the great temple, which was destroyed 2,000 years ago. Scholars believe the appearance of a new red heifer portends the building of a new temple. And after that, the Old Testament says God will appear as a Messiah to change the world. The ashes of the original seven red heifers would have the same effect, but they've been lost for over 2,000 years, perhaps until now. To add to the mystery, this man, Vendel Texas Jones, claims he's finally discovered the cave where they're hidden in the Judean desert. So we might say we're here on the very X marks the spot. Since 1967, using one of the Dead Sea Scrolls as his guide, Vendel Jones has been tracking the elusive ashes. So far, excavations have revealed a jug of anointing oil and huge quantities of a red powder, probably spices, which he believes were hidden when the original holy temple was destroyed and the tabernacle of sacrifice disappeared. Vendel Jones says he's convinced that the ashes of the original red heifer lie in another cave, below where he's already dug. He says ground-penetrating radar shows a cavern, but for the moment he can do no more. The authorities have withdrawn his permit. The next step is uh, to finish the story of the Raiders of the Lost Permit and get a permit to continue our dig here without interruption. Animal X soon found out just how seriously the Israeli authorities take those searching for the ashes of the red heifer. They ordered us to leave. Some of the people in the department said that I'm having problems because I was too lucky. We found the anointing oil, we found the incense, and just about three miles over there we found the, uh, the, where the tabernacle stood with the boundary around it. And uh, these are uh, very significant finds. I don't know whether they feel intimidated by our success or whether maybe they may be afraid that if we find these things, everything in Israel is going to change. In fact, everything in the world is going to change. Hi, Chaim Richman is an internationally recognized biblical scholar and an expert on the Red Heifer prophecy, who is watching developments closely. I like to look at it in the sense of kind of like a wake-up call. Um, all of these things happening in the age that we live in are kind of like indications, um, almost like the voices that you hear in a faraway room that you can't quite make out, that something is going on, that the film is on fast forward and that the time of our redemption is at hand. The red heifer may be a sign the world is waiting for. The red heifer may be safely locked away and under constant watch, but in Australia, efforts to trap a more ferocious beast have constantly failed. Alien big cats have been seen by many people. After the break, we speak to some of them. It definitely appears to be a panther-type uh, uh, cat cougar uh, of that size. Welcome back to Animal X. Britain is famous for its alien big cats, but not Australia. Officials refuse to believe they exist, and as yet, no one has caught one. However, many people are absolutely sure they've seen them stalking through bushland. But where could they have come from? Australia is known for its cute kangaroos and cuddly koalas. It's the last place you'd expect to find one of these. This land of marsupials and gum trees isn't supposed to have any carnivorous big cats. 
But don't tell that to these people. And he was walking across this paddock and I saw him for at least eight minutes. But it sounded like a woman being murdered. A blood-curdling scream. Uh, I would say they would be uh, either cougars or, or some sort of panther. Mysterious big cats have been seen in both Victoria and Western Australia. Animal X went to speak to those who claim to have witnessed these alien creatures. The cats uh, I've seen here are definitely pumas. Arthur Scott Norman is a former African game warden now living in Eastern Australia. He knows his big cats. Something's been through here this morning, but what it is, I don't know. Arthur says he's seen pumas casually slinking along his fence line. That is a big cat print. <coughs> Pat West lives less than 20 kilometers from Arthur. She had a pet dog taken by a big cat. He was just actually a, a bloody heap. He was just torn to pieces. Pat West runs a refuge for abandoned dogs. Ben was her favorite, a whippet, just like this one. He'd only been out for about 15 minutes, but when Pat went to call him in, he was nowhere to be found. Ben! Ben! She searched all over for Ben, ben! but unbeknown to Pat, the big cat had grabbed him. Eventually, she found him at her own front door. He had escaped the big cat, but had paid dearly. He was just lying in a pool of blood. I put my torch down, and he was just soaked in blood. All Pat could do was comfort him and call the vet. It was the right side of its throat had been badly ripped. Dr. Andrew Keefe is now president of the Australian Veterinary Surgeons Board. We had two puncture marks on this side of the vertebrae and that the teeth went around to where the trachea was. So the bite was in this direction here from there and it just took out that material. So it had to open its mouth a significant level. So what sort of animal could do this? The next night, Aboriginal trackers and Agricultural Protection Board officers mounted a hunt. But they had the searchlights going here, the two searchlights, all night that night. I but nothing was caught, even though tracks were found. One hunter said he spotted a mother and two cubs, but they disappeared like phantoms into the bush without trace. Another victim of the mysterious big cat was a baby camel. Camel breeder Chris O'Hora believes that the big cat in question watched the calf being born, then moved in to attack. This is what it left behind. And, uh, it definitely appears to be a panther type uh, uh, cat cougar uh, of that size. Uh, the long tail and body shape definitely indicate to me uh, on the sightings that we've seen this back black slinky creature um, going up and down the property. Chris and his family want the culprit dead or alive and are setting traps to catch the mysterious predator. Stop there. Right, uh, down now. Down. Others are taking more drastic action. While Chris O'Hora does what he can, about 400 kilometers south, mysterious big cats have been killing stock for years. People aren't setting traps for them down here. They're out in the bush, hunting them with guns. Peter Nicola has been a farmer all his life. He's seen numerous big cats prowling the district. Out one night hunting, he came across a mysterious pair of eyes in the dark. Okay, Gosh, what's that? I've never seen anything like that before. And we had a close that's look. That's a and um, on these eyes would have been light gold colour, pretty far apart, bigger than 50 cent pieces. It was sitting down on the ground with its tail wrapped around the front. Its, its uh, front legs were, well, that thick. It was a similar story for his neighbour, Brian Lumley. I was sitting here about this hour at night and looking across the paddock over here, waiting for the ruse to come out. And uh, I suddenly got this horrible feeling something was watching me. So I, I turned around like this and looked up here 
And there's this huge black cat looking down at me. He's got beautiful big yellow eyes and he's looking down at me. Despite all these sightings and many more, the government refuses to acknowledge the existence of anything unusual. CALM is the Australian government's Department for Conservation and Land Management. The official position on the big cats is that uh, there is no evidence that they exist in Western Australia. But having said that, Rob Hagen is one conservation ranger who has seen one of these big cats with his own eyes. I've actually seen an, a large animal that uh, I'm unable to explain. I thought it was a cat which was uh, probably three quarters of a metre high at the shoulder and probably a metre and a half to two metres long um, body and tail. A conundrum. He's seen it, but must stick with the official line. Former track and field star Shirley Delahunty was an Olympic gold medalist. She's also a nuclear physicist and has seen a big cat too. Um, it was um, dark, I presume it was black, but it was dark. It was early morning, but the sun was still up. And um, it was lean, a bit like a cougar or like a... Um, black leopard or something like that. It just had a different movement to anything I'd ever seen before. Despite official denials, another government conservation ranger, David Farquhar, says he once saw a cougar-type creature in the forest where he was working. At, at first glance, I, I, I knew it wasn't a dog. Um, it wasn't a fox, and, and to me, in my mind to this day, I, I would say that it was a large cat. The way it moved, the shape, the color, um, the height, in my mind, to this day, I, I would certainly believe that it was a large cat. You know, there's, there's plenty of sightings um, through people from CALM as well as farmers and um, other people of the public. Did these big cats that officially don't exist come from? Brian Lumley says the cats were mascots on board US warships visiting Australia during World War II. Prior to the Battle of the Coral Sea, the U.S. Navy ordered the cats to be disposed of. I originally come off an American battleship uh, down near Denmark in Western Australia. Uh, my father seen them on board the boat during the Second World War. It's believed another group of big cats may have escaped from a traveling circus after a traffic accident 20 years later. I think there's definitely a cover-up. I believe there's a cover-up. With so many sightings over such a wide area, some say it's only a matter of time before the big cats attack humans, and not animals, in their quest to survive. It's said there are stranger things in heaven and earth than we can think of. And then I saw the head, which was like a giant snake head, and it was smooth. For ashes are used in order to purify. You've just seen some of them on Animal X.